drove himself athletically, academically, to do the best he could in whatever he was interested in at the time. He is the face of this company. However, he's not the champion. And I know for a fact that that's something that bothers him because he wants to show to the world that him leaving the other place uh, was not a mistake. <laughs> What up, what up, everybody? Welcome back to, this is actually week three of the War Report. I am co-host with Johnny Rawls. This is my man, Cyrus. Cyrus, how was your week so far? Was it uh, eventful? I know, again, uh, we had a lot of wrestling with the draft, and but we're here, back, uh, after another eventful Wednesday night. Yeah, you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, nah, like, uh, this week, I don't know, AEW and NXT kind of just, like, bored me, and I think, like, uh, this time it was kind of weird, like, they kind of, like, switched places, where NXT has, like, a boatload of matches, uh, and they're, like, short, but AEW has, like, you know, like, five, six matches, but they're, like, really long, and I, I thought that was, I thought that was, like, cool, I guess. Yeah, it was definitely, it, it definitely felt different this time around. Like, there was a yeah. definitely different feel between the two shows. Um, NXT is starting, I feel like, starting to kind of settle a little bit. Like, they're setting up the secondary things. Now they just need to do, uh, like, the main programs. And then ALW yeah. Dynamite is kind of on the flip side, where, like, they set up the main programs, and now they kind of need to set up, like, a little bit of the secondary ones. Yeah, um... NXT has, like, a lot of stuff going on, but, like, it's not too fleshed out. Like, we have, like, a million and one contenders for Shayna, <laughs> which is, like, you know, Shayna, Shayna versus the world, which is, like, pretty cool, I guess. Um, you know, we already know that it's leading up to Roderick Strong and Dream, but, you know, since Dream got hurt, uh, they're just going to postpone that, I, I guess, for whatever reason, probably save it for, like, the next takeover. Uh, and then we know for the NXT title that it's going to be Ciampa versus, uh, Adam Cole. And then we don't, uh, I don't really know what's going on with the tag titles. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. And <laughs> it's been like three weeks now and we still don't know where Bal uh, Balor is going to be doing. Uh, yeah, we'll find out. So I think we'll find out like next week. Um, Hey, that's taking too long, man. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get into, you know, our two main shows of the week, we kind of wanted to touch on uh, a couple pieces of news and, and maybe a new show yeah. in there, and it's called NWA Power. Um, with with three R's, which is Yeah, weird. <laughs> Power. Um, yeah. We, uh, Cyrus watched more of, like, I watched clips of it, um, Cyrus watched more of like and power than I did, but for yeah. what I saw, I thought it was kind of refreshing. Like it definitely like if anybody remembers kind of like the old time things of like Ric Flair like going off on like you know his you know twenty thousand dollar shoes and like a limousine yeah. riding jet flying. It gave you that old feel, and then I like we had talked <laughs> about Nick Alice's promo, and it was a it was a dope promo. Like I, I was kind of like yeah. bullish on him being the champion, but like I was sold here. I, th I think everybody, like I only watched the first episode, but I think everybody that was on that show cut a really good promo. Like I was sold on everybody that was uh, on the roster. Um, like Eli Drake cut a really good one. Like you said, uh, Nick Aldis cut a really good one. James Storm did. J James Storm, he <laughs> absolutely like. <laughs> I forgot the other dude's name, but yo, he really like ripped the, uh, you know, tear it into him. I thought that was really cool. Um, and Tim Storm like cut one of like, probably like one of the most emotional filled promos like I've like seen in a while. It was uh, some really cool stuff. Yeah, I really like and the wrestling and the wrestling wasn't that bad either. No, I uh, no no I I really like how they're leaning into kind of like that old '80s feel. Like everybody, mm -hmm. I think the the guy that he was talking to, like James Storm, was his name was Josephus or something like that. 
Yeah. Um, I, I really like how it, it kind of like encapsulates that time of like kind of like no frills and like just kind of throwback wrestling. And they definitely found basically like an audience. Like a lot of people were raving about it, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, this is an alternative. Like, I think this is, like, really completely different from a lot of things that are happening in the wrestling world right now. And I think they're doing some really cool stuff. My only issue so far is that NWA, even though it's in the South, you know, from the first episode I saw, there is no people of color. Yeah, none. And there was no women on the show. That's a big issue. I heard that there's a women's match on the second episode, but it's a squash uh, not too big of a fan of that. Uh, th- actually, there were pe- uh, there were people of color on this first episode, but it was kind of like a squash as well. So I think over time, you know, they'll fix that and be, you know, more inclusive, and it doesn't look just like a bunch of white dudes hanging out. Mm-hmm. But like it, it from what I saw, it is a fun show. Yeah, I think uh, Allison K, otherwise otherwise known as Sienna, had a just Matt had a match on the second show. Um, she's their women's champion. I know Jazz was kind of there for a little bit. I don't know if she's still working with them, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, I definitely, I, I definitely want to see more, more from them because, like you said, I think yeah. this is a definite alternative. Like you know what I mean? Like you know how AEW says mm-hmm. like we're the alternative to you know WWE. No, this is a real alternative. This, yes, <laughs> this is an absolutely like they're not taking petty shots the the presentation is different you know the personas that they put on are like super different like it feels very old school which is like really cool um i you remember when south uh south paul regional wrestling came out yeah. and everybody was like man uh what if they actually had the uh well what was it it was like something at the swamp pay-per-view mm-hmm. this is it yeah this like, is it and is that like it, it might not have the silly characters, but they do have, like, you know, the cool characters of that age. And I, I think uh, it's it's presented very well. Yeah, man. And we also wanted to kind of highlight some major news that just happened. Uh, Bushi mm-hmm. Road has purchased Stardom. Um, uh, so, man. Yeah, I kinda, when I, 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 wanted when I heard, to... first heard the news, oof. <laughs> man i was i was i was worried at first then i i wasn't too familiar what uh bushy road was i had to like you know turn to a friend and hopefully she can tell me um so it's basically just you know stardom under a new umbrella they're no longer with uh i think it's like a wonder ring or whoever they were uh, affiliated with and people were just like oh man new japan are finally gonna have you know women's matches that's not happening you don't have to worry about that and i would like stardom to stay far away from new japan uh stardom has their own like sort of charm and you know silliness to it that i think that would be lost if they did collaborate with new japan but, you know, the more I read on the situation, it's basically going to be like DDT Pro Wrestling and was it TJP? I think it's like Tokyo something. I forget. It's another Joshi promotion. Like, it's, it's just going to be that under the same umbrella. Like, they weren't, they aren't going to be doing any collaborative shows. I, They said that they're only going to be doing collaborative shows outside the U.S., which is like perfect. That's what I like. Yeah, and one little tidbit that I liked that I read that Stardom talent is going to be signed to full time contracts, which is I love that pretty dope. Like uh, I think this is a win for the promotion because they'll get more money, they'll have more exposure because like mm-hmm. the things that I've seen from Stardom, um, just like with the tournament and like what you've been kind of filling me in, I really like. Like I'm a fan of Mayun, I'm a fan of. Uh, Hana, like I'm a, I'm a fan of a lot of talent there, and I want to see more. So I think this is a win-win. Like I don't, I don't think this is bad, mm-hmm. especially um, that New Japan and Stardom will kind of stay as separate companies. Like that's a, de- a yeah. definite one. You're not going to see like Miho Abe or Peter like in. I don't think you're going to see them <laughs> in Stardom. So like, 
you know? Yeah, you don't have to worry about that. Um, my thing is, is that people, like, people that like don't watch stardom are just kind of like you know wrestling fans act to like act like money is bad <laughs> you know and if you watch stardom you would like you want to see that you know the production quality go up because you know it's not it might not be a big deal to some people but to me uh you know when the ring announcer announces people into the ring they don't have direct audio so when they're recording stuff, you basically hear the speakers of the arena, like, you know, going into the microphone. So you can't really, sometimes you can't really hear names clearly. And it's just like, it would be cool to have commentary or, you know, have a better venue. Maybe we can get stuff in higher uh, quality when it's on the network or whatever. It's just like, their production quality is going to shoot up a, a shit ton, like, when they do promos, it's not going to just be, you know, like some weird backdrop in a in a hallway. <laughs> it's going to be cool. Like I I definitely like where this is going. It's a cool thing for uh, Joshi in general, and you know, women wrestlers are getting paid more. They're getting paid more, and then like Stardom will have a chance to kind of retain their talent because like yes. other than like you know. Riho and then uh, B Priestley, who, who kind of like work in, in between. Like, stardom does get rated a little bit. I mean, look at Kari Sane, look at, you know, EO. Yeah, EO. Yeah, like, so they'll get to like keep more talent in house, which is cool. Like, I, I really like yeah, that. Fantastic. Do that. Um, and, uh, you know, them running shows in the same building as New Japan is basically like uh, WrestleMania weekend when WWN has like their evolved show and then like you know everything else that's on that network all in like the same building at just like different times like that's cool you know all right so also uh oh, no, stardom uh, um you know new japan are having more shows in america so that means we get more stardom shows in america yeah, which is awesome because like yeah. these, these girls can i mean these women can wrestle they can really yeah. they're really good like i watched a couple of the matches there and and like they put on better matches than some of the men <laughs> that we watch oh yeah trust me they're putting on a lot better shows than what you're seeing in new japan but they don't want to tell you that oh man um so yeah let's get into our main shows i mean that's what everybody's here for so let's start yeah. with <laughs> alw dark um i wanted to to ask you specifically about this week because they do a skit where Kenny Omega is talking with the Young Bucks and he's he said that, you know, he doesn't have a match. So he wanted a lights out, unsanctioned match with Joey Janela. And this was <laughs> I guess they really are leaning into like deathmatch Kenny because this yeah. this match was rough. Like this match had a lot of tough spots that Joey took that Kenny took. Um, Kenny gets the win. He gets a much needed W. Um, what are your thoughts on like the evolution, I guess, of Deathmatch Kenny? Um, so last week we were just like Deathmatch Kenny. Oh, whatever. But uh, honestly, like Deathmatch Kenny is just Kenny Omega just with a prop <laughs> involved. Like he he does all the same moves, but maybe there's a chair. Or there's a ladder, or you know, a table. Like he does a Kentaro Crusher on a uh, on a chair. Like that's standard Kenny Omega stuff. Um, I definitely want to see him get more like innovative with his style and like mash it more with deathmatch wrestling. Where maybe he does like a, uh, you know, what is that? Uh, the thing that like Rob Van Dam does, where he tosses the chair and then he does like the rolling kick. Van Dam maybe yeah. he, you know. Yeah, uh, maybe he, like, throws a chair and then hits him with a V-trigger. Like, you know, if, if Kenny, like, if he really leans into it, he could be a pretty cool, like, deathmatch wrestler. I wasn't too high on it before until, like, I actually saw it, and it's pretty sick. Um, like, he could do a Coda's Raft on a whole bunch of chairs. Like, he has a lot of high-impact moves that would look cooler with a prop. So you can call it smoke and mirrors, but it's working out for him. 
I I'm actually a fan of what he's doing. I, I think that like going from ALW Dark into the main show, I'm like, wow, like he this is actually kind of like the best he's looked since uh January. Uh yeah. like I, I think that like as he slows down and kind of like where he can't like do those high spots as much anymore, I'm a fan of him kind of like doing all these crazy things like Joey Janela took a V trigger to, <laughs> to the back of the head, right into a, a a chair. I was like, "Damn, that's really like they really uh, went over like for about twenty minutes, like with the <laughs> unsanctioned thing." Uh, they exceed my expectations on this uh on this match. I think AEW Dark is the best way to consume the AEW product currently. Um, my favorite spot was anything involving a ladder like those spots were like disgusting <laughs> yeah uh and there, and there was the uh the really uh there was the really low german suplex off the set of, uh off the steel steps i thought i was just like that was very unsafe <laughs> when it looked pretty sick yeah like i'm like thinking about like joey janela i'm like is he gonna be like this is an unsanctioned match, like, lights out match where they gotta turn the lights out, and then, like, then they gotta have the match. I'm like, is this gonna be Joey Janela's angle? Like, I guess he's gonna be, like, mm -hmm. the guy that they have all these, like, crazy, like, weapons matches with, which is cool. Like, this, that's yeah. kind of, like, Joey's yeah. thing. Um, I, although I really like the match a lot, I do think that maybe Joey Janela should have got a big win over Kenny Omega, uh, cause you know, Joey Janela has been doing this stuff for a very long time. We know this from the Joey Janela spring breaks, just like any of his stuff in GCW. I definitely think they could have done something where, you know, Kenny has this unsanctioned match, but he loses to Joey Janela because, you know, he's more experienced than him in this spot. And, you know, maybe he's not truly ready for Moxley. Like that would have, that would have, you know, been some cool stuff, but overall, I like the match a lot where they do going forward with this is like whatever yeah this is like the second loss that joey's has had in this type of match because he's lost to kenny and now he's lost to mox so like oh yeah it'd be interesting to see where he goes from here is, is he gonna get on the main show it, like let's <laughs> is joey janela gonna become like the serious wrestler because i see what that's like in pwg and uh i i do i not a big fan of that joey <laughs> Well, you also had, like, a, a three-way match between Kip Saban, Peter Avalon, the librarian, ugh. and then you had uh, Son Sonny Kiss. I'm glad they finally got um, Sonny um, Kiss on yeah, a show. Yeah, finally. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That was cool. That was cool. And then you had, like, the eight-man with Angelico, Jack Evans, and the Dark Order. Didn't. Mm -mm. Was not a big fan of that one. With SCU and SEMA, <laughs> and, yeah, like... Dark Order, Jack Evans and Angelico get the win, and that was just kind of like an eight-man match that they had to kind of lead into like Kenny and Joey. That's you know that's fine. So the yeah. main show, um, well, uh, we had two tag team tournament matches. Uh, so the Lucha Brothers attacked <laughs> SCU first. So Scorpio took place a. a Chris Daniels, and then SCU kind of got the win over Best Friends. Scorpio was kind of really? like... Yeah, he was, Scorpio <laughs> was kind of like the star of this match. He threw yeah, his, see, he absolutely was. He threw, a shoe, he threw a shoe into the crowd and they threw it back to him. Um, they, yeah, it was just... I don't... I don't know why they threw his, uh, why uh, Dustin threw his shoe, and I'm surprised that he got it back, but I don't know why he threw it back into the crowd. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, dude, what are you going to do? Like, he's just going to walk out in socks, I guess? Uh, yeah. But they advance. They got to face Dark Order next week. Um, so let's talk about this. Uh, Luchasaurus is hurt. He had a, a really bad, like, I think, hamstring injury, so... So sad, so sad. So, um, you had Jungle Boy teaming up with Marco Stunt versus the Lucha Brothers. This match was a little bit more competitive than I thought that it, it should have been. <laughs> it, it, yeah. Um, I, 
I'm telling myself that we probably it probably would have been a completely different match if Luchasaurus wasn't hurt. Oh yeah. That's so I guess they kind of like an audible was thrown and they needed to fill in for time so there's a lot of the Lucha Bros just like manhandling the hell out of Marco Stunt and it, it well both of them really but mainly Marco Stunt and I think it goes very long and you know there's no real like babyface comeback or like a second win from them that matters too much especially because the match starts at a million miles per hour um so I don't know it, it just like went too long bro they were Lucha Brothers basically like Penta was basically throwing Marco Stun around with one arm. <laughs> Half of the match. I love just that. Throw, yeah, he's just picking him up and throwing him to Phoenix. Um, I think Jungle Boy actually looked really good here. He was he had mm -hmm. he basically had to be the Haas for them, like doing like the yeah, big moves. Which was super weird. And then Marco Stunt, like he basically had to like use Marco Stunt and, and kind of like throw him around and and but which it, it it looked good for like the first you know seven or you know five seven minutes in the in the match, but then when like Jungle Boy is kind of like on the apron recovering, and then uh, Penta is just you know manhandling Marco Stunt like he literally like tosses him into Phoenix into a super kick, and it's just like all right, but like what's going on here? Like just set up the finisher, like take it home, you know? Yeah, I like I said like um. I haven't heard Cornette's thing, but I'm pretty sure he he's not going to be a fan of this because <laughs> <laughs> he is not a fan of Marco Stunt. He calls him a little kid. Um, yeah, and he got beat like a little kid. Um, I like the match. I definitely I do think it should have just been shorter. That's like really my only complaint of it. Like I understand they're doing the you know cocky heel thing, where it's just like you two are children. Like I <laughs> like we can literally just toss you around, which they do. But it's just like all right, but. Let's wrap it up. <laughs> so, Lucha Brothers, when they advance and they're going to fight Private Party next week. Um, that's going to be fantastic. I think that's going to be an amazing match. I So, we got Santana Ortiz. <laughs> they are, uh, apparently, they are called Proud and uh, Proud and Powerful uh, from mm -hmm. their uh, names and the uh, theme music. Uh, I don't know what I think about that theme music. Uh so they're they get this mm. yeah it was all right like it's better than I thought a lot of AOW theme music is. Um, yes, that's for sure. <laughs> they got a squash win, and then Jericho comes on and he says, you know, uh, I don't, I do not like this uh, the presentation of this promo. Yeah, it's not weird really. because like he comes on, he's like ha ha ha, and then he's like young bucks. Uh, if you guys are like you know man enough like you guys will face you know santana ortiz at full gear i guess that's the match that's going to be set it, it, i could mm -hmm. pretty much guarantee that they're going to accept that challenge um what do you think about like that potential match coming on cool fantastic uh it might be a cool match i'm not i'm not down on the match uh certainly why not <laughs> all right so you and I talked about this uh, kind of like off the pod, but Cody had a video package. Now, I thought this was a great video package, but yeah. um, Darby Allen actually has a promo, right? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. He has a promo that is supposed to lead into him challenging Jericho. That's not on the main show. The Cody package is on the main show. So... Like I said, and what we've talked about, mm -hmm. why am I buying into Darby Allen basically almost getting the upset on Jericho if the promo is not even on the show? Like they're already going into full gear with Cody, <laughs> like, like with Cody going against Jericho. Why? What? What's with the suspension of disbelief? Um, it like I don't know why they try to make it seem like it's not going to be. Jericho versus Cody for the title match, uh, for the AEW title. I don't know why they're trying to trick us, but I remember because I, I legitimately forgot that it was going to be Darby Allen versus Chris Jericho. And 
I wanted to know if, you know, if Darby Allen is a decent promo. So I went into the chat. Hey, has Darby Allen, you know, cut a promo on Jericho? And he said, yeah, it's on your YouTube. Why? <laughs> Why is it on their YouTube? And then, you know, on the same show where he has a title match, we get a basically like a 15 minute Cody promo. Like, come on, what's going on here? And I thought, uh, I thought it was like, uh, the, pro uh, the video package itself is done very well. Of course, there's like some stuff I like rolled my eyes at, like, uh, he needs to win the AEW title to get the stigma that he's not like, you know, a world champion. And that stigma that he got from the other place. And I was just like, all right, you basically have to start your own promotion to win the world title. Like, roll my eyes, damn it. <laughs> like, that's hilarious. I, like I said, I didn't believe that Sammy Gravar was going to beat Cody. Yeah, I, I was high on. Man. I'm high on Darby Allen. I, I really like how mm -hmm. they're presenting him. But like if I'm a first time watcher, I'm I'm anticipating Cody versus Jericho. I'm not even thinking about the main event. So like why not I think that's something that they need to work on instead of telegraphing what's gonna happen in the future, like the big matches. Yeah. At least suspend a little bit and make me believe that like these underdogs can actually beat the big guys like otherwise i'm just like all right well i'll see you november 9th yeah yeah and i don't get why you would... announce the main event for full gear and then try like before aew is even a thing and then you know while we're waiting for that match to happen you're trying to set up like these quote-unquote road bumps that we know it's bullshit <laughs> they got to do a better job with that like, going forward. Uh, so Just don't spoil things. Stop that. You're you're already quote unquote selling out places. Uh, you know, in 20 minutes or whatever before you even announce a card. So I don't get why you had to announce the main event for Full Gear like even before your first show. Like I think like a month or like uh, three weeks before their first uh, show. Like come on. That's how you build guys. That's how you build like and like <laughs> ALW like needs a mid card. Like that's how you build guys going oh, forward. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? We did, uh we, we talked about it off mic. AEW doesn't have a mid card belt. And that's the problem that NXT had a for a very, very long time. It was just a bunch of guys kind of hovering around, you know, and I feel like waiting waiting for their turn. And that's what I feel going... That's a perfect segue going into this next match because you had John Moxley and Pac versus Hangman and Omega. Um, I think this was... Like, again, I think this was the best I've seen Omega like in the string of, of matches other than maybe SEMA and then the ALW Dark match. Hangman, Mox, and Pac... Uh, I think they are what they are. I, I, Pac is, is, is Pac. He, he's going to do amazing things. But I think Mox and Hangman, that's who they are. They're not going to be... I don't think that they're going to be anything different. Like, I don't think that you, you're going to have to put them in matches with guys who are outstanding to make them look outstanding, if, if, that, if you yeah. know what I mean. Like, because... I don't know, man. Like, this match, I think, went a little too long. I think they could have cut that down. Of course, you got the rub with, like, Mox doing the middle fingers. He's doing his kind of, like, Stone Cold Steve Austin bit. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, I would say from this point on out, every match on the show kind of failed to, like, keep my attention. Because um, in this match, I'm... I'm not particularly high on Hangman Page. I definitely think they need a mid-card title for him. Like, right now, he feels like, you know, Ty Dillinger in NXT, where it's just like, you know, this dude is kind of, like, super over, and, like, maybe a title will help him. But, like, f for most of the matches, just a whole bunch of high spots, and then, you know, Moxley doing stuff. And it builds up, I guess, they're going to have a three-way between Mox, Kenny, and... Pop down the line, probably at uh, full gear. 
Mm -hmm. For what? I don't know, because there's no mid oh. title yet. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Also, uh, I don't like that they kind of, like, ruined uh, Pac's undefeated streak. Like, <laughs> he mentions it one week, and then it's instantly negated the next week. Yeah, so, yeah because you know. Mox kind of, like, leaves him high and dry, you know? Um, yeah. Oh, also, um, I don't know if you noticed on the graphic... Depending on which match they're in, it kind of says like uh, singles, so uh, you know whatever their win loss, and then overall like win loss. So tag title, I mean uh, tag match wins and losses might mean less than uh, singles. Yeah, they, if if you're a singles competitor. Yeah, they really haven't like explained yet how that's weighted yet, uh, mm -hmm. because like you know. Pac loses a title, like a tag match, but he's still undefeated in singles, you know? So, like, does that weigh yeah. him down for a future title shot? We don't know yet. Like, does it, if he possibly goes for, like, the tag titles, like, does that loss count again against him? Uh, we don't we don't know yet. Like, so is it, like, a college football thing where, like, I think Cody mentioned that, like, the types of wins and who you beat is weighted higher so like we'll see how that comes into play because from a single standpoint Pac has a, a really good argument like I should be yeah. getting a title match like so yeah I, I interested to see how that comes about of course we had two title matches uh, we had Britt Baker versus Riho I think that there were definitely some rough spots here uh, it got mm -hmm. a little better as you went uh, forward. I, I like the finish that they didn't really bury Britt. Like she went for she went for the hold, and then Rio gets the roll up. So it maybe will set you know a rematch down the line once like Britt kind of gets some wins under her belt because Rio is undefeated singles. Um, but I think this. Their women's division definitely needs more of a rapport with each other because they're off in some spots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. It, this match is whatever, really. <laughs> like, uh, I kind of, I kind of just like clocked out at some point. Like, uh, the matches, like, like I said, like these matches at these points, uh, kind of like struggled to keep, uh, keep my attention. Well, keep me engaged, honestly. Yeah, because, like, I, I feel with Dynamite in particular, and as they go um, later in the nights with, like, their their matches, like, they kind of, you can, can kind of guess how they're going to go. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they're like, oh, there's really no pr unpredictability here. Like, we just kind of said earlier, like, you, you, like, it's like, all right, well, he'll get, he'll get, like, offense uh the face will kind of like battle back and then it'll either be like with the heel doing stuff or the face will kind of like get like a heel win like they'll get like the roll up or they'll get like the sudden like you're like yeah. what like <laughs> the roles are reversed like i'm not really sure like how they're playing like the heel face dynamic yet with especially with like some of the smaller uh card people but like uh, yeah this match i mean Riho was trying, Britt was trying, but I think Britt just needs more. She needs experience. more matches. Yeah, she definitely needs more matches. Yeah, she she just needs experience. And I saw people just like kind of like, well, you know, she went to dental school, so she didn't have time to you know practice being a professional wrestler. Boo fucking who? <laughs> I don't I don't care. <laughs> what the what the what the hell that has to do with anything? Like, congrats to her getting her, like, you know, her, uh, you know, her license and stuff like that. But, like, if you're going to put her in this position, she might as well be ready. And you know what? Maybe she doesn't have to be ready. This is probably just a learning experience. And, you know, like, you know, experience. That's perfectly fine. But I'm not going to create excuses for her. This match isn't great. <laughs> and, hey, well, you know what? They, they did prop her up as, like, She's the first woman signed, and she came out and said that I want that title. I want to be the face of the division. So that's where 
Like, if we were talking about Becky Lynch, we'd be saying the same thing. You know what I mean? Like, if we talk yeah. about Shayna Baszler or Bailey, it would be the same critique. She she came out with the, uh, you know, cocky face shit. And for the match, you know, yeah, she... Jim Ross uh, letting us know that she's the hoss in this one. Because she's so much bigger than Riho. Yeah, he, he needs uh, to stop with the whole, like, Riho small thing. Like, we get it, dude. Like, we, we watched... <laughs> We watched her basically be the hoss in the Nyla Rose match. She was the hoss. <laughs> we can see that she's small, JR. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, like, uh, Britt Baker is kind of like beating her ass for the whole thing. And then, you know, Riho manages to barely escape. Like, uh, what, you remember what, like, what Samoa Joe said to, uh, to Finn Balor? It was just like... You know, you didn't de- defeat me. You kind of, like, just escaped. Yeah. Or, like, you barely survived. Oh, well, uh, that and that. Uh, yeah, I think... I think Britt Baker would get um, much more experience if they, like, kept her away from the title picture and kept her breeding... Uh, I mean, uh, oof. Kept her feuding with B Priestley. If they had, like, a match series between that. Kind of like, uh... Sorry, you know, to do WWE comparisons, but, uh... Like, have her have a back and forth, like, Lacey Evans or Natalia or, like, uh, Charlotte and Sasha, where, the, you know, they constantly have back and forth. Yeah. And let her gain experience off of that. Yeah, like, she's looking for an opponent. They're going to be in Pittsburgh. They're, or uh, Britsburg, baby. So she's looking for an opponent. <laughs> so, hey, B Priestley, show up. This is the only time I'm asking for B Priestley. <laughs> if she does not show up, AEW royally fucked up. <laughs> yeah, because, that's all I got. Yeah, because like, why build that that whole feud between them, and then like B is like, oh, um, you know, I'm at home, so like, have her show yeah. up. Yeah. So. Like it, it, I think that's so ridiculous. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm just kind of thinking like, who, who else would show up? Like Ali or like Brandy Rhodes? Maybe Brandy Rhodes shows up. I, if it's I'm telling you right now, if it's not B Priestley, I'm changing the channel. <laughs> Keep that feud going. Yes. Uh, well, I think you want to keep that feud going because you want to keep B away from stardom. That's <laughs> what. <laughs> well, ooh, don't get me started. <laughs> but I, I just think it makes sense. It does. So just, like, keep that going. I agree. Uh, so we had our main event. Darby Allen versus Chris Jericho in a street fight. Um, Chris Jericho was uh, the pain maker. Uh, he, his pain maker <laughs> moniker from from New Japan. If you're not uh, mm-hmm. really like familiar with it, he comes out with the spikes and the face paint. Um, he, no no difference between like move sets. He's just Jericho here. Yeah. Uh, he he like it, it's not like a. a... Keisha and Liger kind of situation or like a Demon Valor kind of situation where he like moves different or anything like that. It's just Chris Jericho with like third grade face paint. <laughs> like I said, like I think Darby Allen is, is uh, going to be a star for them. Um, mm-hmm. I, I really like what they're doing. Uh, the finish, because they had Hager like while Darby Allen is taped, he's getting offense off, which I thought was, I'm like, yo, that's cool. Like, he might be, he actually might be Jericho with two <laughs> hands tied behind his back. And then, like, <laughs> Jake Hager comes in with, like, it, it hits him, and then Jericho puts him in the walls of Jericho. I'm like, all right, I see that they're right. trying to protect Darby Allen here, but, like, mm-hmm. I'm like, all right. For why? <laughs> yeah, but I'm like, what do you protect him for? He's not gonna get. Is he gonna get a uh, a rematch? Like, I I think uh, he would have. I don't think his character would have been affected at all. Like, uh, if he lost, clean. Um, I get that. You know, probably Jericho. It was probably like somebody's idea to not like. You know, let's get a dirty finish so he gets some heel heat. But I, I definitely think like Jericho is probably like. You know, getting heat most of the match, so I didn't. I didn't think the interruption was needed. Yeah, I think that was like kind of like a, a w, WCW ass ending right there. Uh, I think that for the third week in a row. Yeah, another yeah third week, and um, 
Like I said, it was overdone. Like he, Darby Allen kind of looks good if he loses clean. Like if this guy was fighting, he was getting good offense in. He was fighting literally mm-hmm. with a hand with hands tied behind his back. Like you could have just had Jericho yeah. get the pin. Yeah, and you know, his win loss record might be like whatever, but like, who cares? Like we, some people want to see Darby Allen, you know, do well. So I I just think like. Let's do that in general, I guess. AOW Dynamite ends with the inner circle kind of celebrating and uh, Jericho drinking uh, bubbly. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> oh wait, uh, there's something I wanted to mention. Okay. You know what was real funny in the match where Jericho hit the back elbow, which is basically the Judas effect, and like Darby Allen more or less uh, no sold it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, uh, all right, so like. Nobody called that on commentary, but I definitely mm-hmm. kind of picked up on it. So I'm like, uh, like, what is he going to finish with this match? And I guess he finished with the walls of Jericho. But I'm like, he definitely hit his finisher here. And like, mm-hmm. Darby Allen was like, ah. <laughs> that was funny. Sorry. <laughs> so that's another ALW Dynamite in the books. What is your, so week three. Before we get into NXT, what do you what is your overall thoughts on the show? Like, is it gotten better for you, or like, have you lost a little bit of touch with it? I think this is the worst episode yet. I think the second episode is by far my favorite. I I like that episode a lot so far. Um, you can see it in you know for the people that care. You can see it in the ratings that the you know it, it is losing the attention of some people. Um, me clocking like me clocking out by the second match is not a good sign. Um, I watch AEW first before NXT. AEW gets all my attention, and I, I they're really losing me, man. <laughs> it, it's really starting to like it, it's it's getting hard to keep up, really. I think overall uh, they kind of did some. There, there's a couple good things they did. Uh, mm-hmm. Like the Scorpio thing was kind of cool. Um, parts of the Jungle Boy, uh, Marco Stump Lucha Brothers match was all right. Um, the Cody video package, was, even though I don't think it was kind of neat, yes. was really well done. But they really have. I, I definitely think it, it should have. It should have been on next week's episode. But I really did like it. Yeah, but I think that. Everything is kind of... They really need to sort out a mid-card and start building that up because it feels mm-hmm. like most of the show, if it wasn't like Mox, Pac, Hangman, and Omega, a lot of it was surrounded of, of the inner circle. You had a, a Santana mm-hmm. Ortiz, you had Chris Jericho. Like, you had that other than, like, the tag tournament. Um, they really need to start building other guys to, like start believing in, in like a mid card guy because other otherwise i'm like yeah. what are you like i haven't seen like other than like aow dark i haven't seen kip saban i haven't seen you know uh joey janela like i haven't mm. seen like uh sunny kiss sunny kiss penelope ford yeah I mean, yeah where's uh, penelope ford like sadie that... gay sadie gibbs like that's aw needs a second women's match Please. That is, I, I think that's one of the most egregious leftouts is Sadie Gibbs. Yes, um, not having TV. Sadie Gibbs on your show. It, it's criminal at this point. <laughs> Somebody should be arrested for not having her on the show. Jeez. Um, I like I said on the last episode. I'm probably going to be echoing it every episode until I see some change. But it's just like these shows with the absence of the elite and Chris Jericho is going to. It looks grim in the future. You know, and probably like January from now, if I still see, you know, Chris Jericho with Cody or, you know, Cody, you know, just like the elite versus the inner circle thing, like the roster is, the rest of the roster is going to get affected by that. It's looking sp- like we're going to need, we're going to need more people to get behind. It's looking spooky because like, I don't know who they could really build other than that. It's interesting. To, it'll be interesting to see where they are six months down the road. Um, yeah. Let's get into NXT because there was a lot of stuff that happened. There were a lot of matches on mm-hmm. the show. 
It was like boom, 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 boom. Ridiculous. Like it hits you, hits you, hits you. All right, here's a little bit of semblance of a storyline. But the big things that they tried to build on this episode was the women's division. There is a lot of the, uh, players here. And then the North American title division. Uh, let's start off. Let's start off with the women's because there's a lot of <laughs> man. Listen. So we started off <laughs> Eo Shirai and Caden Carter. Eo wins. <laughs> she says that she wants Shayna next. Rare. Everybody comes out. wants a piece of Shayna. Everybody wants yeah, like everybody wants a shot at the champ. Then Rhea comes out and says that, like, nah man, like I got I got this first. Like she So you got a potential thing there with Eo and Rhea, but Rhea's gotta face uh Bianca. <laughs> Next week, which is what's going on? <laughs> so I'm like, all right, like, is Rhea and Bianca gonna be a clean match? Because is Io gonna interfere? Like, all right, all right. The one thing that I do not want to see NXT do is a battle royale to see who faces Shayna. That is the last thing I want to see. I like people putting their hats in the pot because you, you kind of see the motivations that people have more or less. You got like, but like, you got like five. You're gonna see. You're gonna have to start thinning that shit out. Like, <laughs> like is either we get another fatal four way with Shayna involved, and you know we get another whatever finish, or we get a singles match, and it's just we're gonna need to like start thinning out who our challenges are also when is the next takeover oh uh a survivor series weekend we got a we got a while that's not good <laughs> <laughs> we basically have a month oh we got in some change a month and some, and some change, change before we see you know before we know what is definitive they got a lot of building to do, and that's a lot of weeks to build. Uh, oof. So, like, yeah. I, I do think it's good because they do have a lot of weeks to, like, thin it out. But right now, is is it is looking weird. But probably, like, you know, second week of November, we'll get, like, more of a clearer picture. But currently, start, start you know, cutting down these slices, bro. So, you had a returning Tegan Knox versus Tainara. Conti. Um, Good match. Here's the thing. This uh, NXT episode two, lot of 50-50. Lot of, uh, lot of people getting uh, yeah. offense in. And Tenar gets... That's good. I think that's great. Like they, Tenar gets a lot of offense in. Gets the target in the arm. But I think Tegan looks great here. Like I'm glad that she's healthy. Yeah. Uh, she looks... She, Everything is great. She gets the win here. Dakota comes out and congratulates her. But then Shayna comes out and kind of like throws some bars in front of her. <laughs> yeah. You, I do think this is uh, this is a little weird because this is the only person that Shayna has confronted face to face. <laughs> yeah, other than Rhea, like she confronted and like basically makes fun of Tegan and Dakota. So I'm like, all right, well, are they building Tegan and Shayna? Are they building Dakota versus Shayna? Or is it going to be or like... Bianca versus Shayna? Are they going to... Rhea versus Shayna? Is it going to be like <laughs> Marina versus Jessamine versus Tegan and Dakota? Team kick first? Please. Please. I would love that. Let's get that f uh, the fake horse women in matches. Please. Because they really look goofy <laughs> standing around Shayna not doing shit ever yeah like i'm like all right let's get them in the ring and what a perfect way like other than like against team kick you know what i mean like let's go yeah uh so like i said like very full like as a women's division there is a hell of a lot of talent in nxt i love it but we gotta yeah. like start okay there's gotta be uh and after Shayna, Shayna's got to drop the title soon. Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, <laughs> we we always say that. We're going to say this but, every episode. I, I feel I love Shayna. Like, I think Shayna is a hell of a champion, a hell of a wrestler. But with the amount of talent uh, that 
that is in NXT right now, somebody's got to win the title. Like, somebody's got to take it off her. And another thing I thought, I'm like, Tegan's here. Ray is here. What the hell are they doing in NXT UK? <laughs> you know, this, before we upgraded to the War Report, I used to get all my coverage from NXT UK from you. And now that we only do NXT and AEW, I have no idea what's going on over there. <laughs> okay, so, like, my favorite, Kaylee Ray is the champion over there. And from the last I saw, I didn't re- watch the new <clears throat> the new uh, episode. Uh, mm. Jenny is, is building up for, I think, eventually going after the title. And they're building That's up... That's all I needed to hear. And they're building up Piper Niven, too. So, mm. like... And maybe to get Zaya, I maybe Zaya Brookside comes over here, or maybe she kind of goes after the title because I think she's a great baby face. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm like, all right, well, where's Tony Storm? <laughs> like, is she gonna? Oh yeah, because she she doesn't even show up on NXT. Yeah, so I'm like, all right, well, what is NXT UK? But there's a lot of talent here, uh, and the women's division is probably one of yeah. the best women's divisions in wrestling right now. Um, yeah. Um, it's gonna. I'm going to be very upset if I see Tony Storm next week, and then she's just like, "Shane, I'm calling you out." I'm gonna get real fucking mad. All of a sudden, da, 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 and I'm like, "Oh well, Tony Storm is here to like call." I'm like, "Wow, like Shane has got like seven people calling her out. You better get the horse open to start wrestling somebody." Yeah. Um, how I see this going. Um, I don't know, man. <laughs> it they they got a lot of weeks to start thinking this out. Uh, we're gonna need start needing more of a clearer picture for a lot of these. Uh, well, except the North American title, but we're we're gonna need some uh, clearer paths here. Let's get into that because uh, the undisputed era uh, basically beats the hell out of Velveteen Dream. <laughs> Go ahead. And what looks like. What well, looks like a hate crime. <laughs> yeah, and he delivered on a USB port, which is... A... I hate how Kyle O'Reilly delivered the USB. <laughs> he didn't hand it over to him. He kind of just did like a stupid flick with his hand. And Morrow almost did not catch it. Yeah. Damaging the USB. We almost did not have footage of this. Like, so commentary would probably have to fill us in. Like, oh, well, you know... On a USB, like, they just beat up Velveteen Dream. Uh, there is... It, Dream is injured, so, like, I guess this gives him time to recover. So, mm-hmm. the Keith Lee, Dom, Dominic Diet Djokovic match w- is basically the number one contendership. This is the fourth time that they fought, and they went more as a power match. I love how they yeah. basically, like, change up their styles. Keith Lee did a damn Poison Rana. I'm like, oh my god. That shit was hard. <laughs> but this uh, match doesn't finish because Roddy gets involved. So now you got a triple threat. Oh. Roddy kind of bit off a little bit more than he can chew because he's going against two big hosses in uh, Keith Lee. Yeah. And I, I, when I, as watching this match, I was just like, okay, how is, this, how is his offense going to work? With Keith Lee, because you know he cannot get him up for uh, end, of end of heartache, so he might you know do the stronghold or whatever. But I'm just like for uh, Dijakovic, uh, I would have popped if he did a end of heartbreak on him. <laughs> but now, uh, now we get a much more interesting match, and if, uh, Liam Regal. Shows up very angry to deliver the match. Oh, he was pissed. Yeah, he was fucking angry. I thought uh, that made me laugh. But we're, we're going to get a really cool match next week. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how, like, Roddy kind of, like, alters his style against, like, somebody like Keith Lee. Yeah. And, and maybe, like, him and Keith and Dom kind of, like, throw Roddy around a little bit. I think that's going to happen. <laughs> see, seeing those two eventually work together... And teaming up on Roger Strong would be pretty sick. It would. Like I said, like we said, we had a lot of matches going through, so I'm gonna just kind of like run them down real mm-hmm. quick. So yeah, Champa versus Angel Garza, an- Ooh, another 50-50 yeah. match. Champa like does like he stomps like his like 
His, his uniform. The uh, the the uh, the rip away trunks. Yeah. He like kicks them for some reason and then tries to rip it. And then I guess he missed his cue and then he just rushes to do his DDT thing. Uh, yeah, the willows. It's well. good to see Chompa in action. Yeah, uh, it's good to see Chompa in action, but the match was like uh, to me. Yeah, it was. It was just it was like a good that. intro match to like get Chompa in. And then you, uh, the Undisputed Era kind of like comes out and circles them. But the interesting thing here is that uh, Kathy Kelly interviews Gargano and he, how he feels about Ciampa's return. He said he doesn't know, but he has to kind of like see him face to face. Is this setting the seeds for no. an eventually DIY I reunion? Fight. I will fight somebody. Don't you fucking dare. I don't want to see it again. I'm not trying to see. I mean, like, who are you gonna have to go against, like O'Reilly and Fish? Maybe it's D DIY. Oh, you're right, but that, uh, yeah, I can see Chopper losing uh, against Adam Cole, um, or maybe a war game scenario because we. Um, I mean, if you think it's gonna be, you know, undisputed era, you need four guys. You know what I mean? So like, mm -hmm. so maybe it's gonna be Chopper Gargano. Balor and then a fourth against them. I I am really like in my mind I'm really fixated on Imperium versus Undisputed Era. That's what I want to see in the war game so. That's what I want to see. The the problem is with that who goes over? Yes. Who goes over is is the big issue. I definitely do think that uh I think Imperium should go over. I, I actually agree, and I think that with uh, Eichner and Bar Barthel, their match this uh, against uh, Lorcan and Birch this week, it shows you that they're a really good tag team. And I was wondering mm -hmm. why, like, basically from NXT UK, I'm like, why aren't these guys like, why aren't you guys sending them to get, yeah, getting them the tag titles because they're a really good team yeah. together. Like, why aren't they beating the hell out of Gallus? And you see, this is what I want to see from, you know, Jessamyn Duke and Maria Shafirs. I want to see them grow. I want to see them improve. So, you know, Shayna looks like she's in a, you know, in a, uh, a formidable stable. Yeah, because, like, look at Imperium. Like, Wolf, Eichner, and Barkle can all go. And you got Walter. So it's, like, kind of like going up the Bogota, but it's going to be a tough climb. And I think, yeah, you know, if you're looking for tag teams to kind of go against the Undisputed Era, Eigner and Barthel is definitely, they're definitely a good primer for that. You can always kind of go yeah. Lord, Lord and Birch, too, as they showed you. But, yeah, I, I really like that Imperium's kind of, like, enforcing themselves in, in NXT. I'm not really sure what they're going to kind of, like, do with UK if they kind of, like, go back and forth. But I like mm -hmm. what they're doing here. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, Imperium winning war games would be a really good look for NXT UK, which is much needed because, you know, there's not a lot of eyes on that product. And I do think, you know, kind of like the absence of any UK representation, like, you know, besides like, you know, Pete Dunne uh, and Tony Storm, but like, there's no representation on the main roster and, you know, uh, Tony Storm is nowhere to be seen. And then Pete Dunne has, you know, the second hour. <laughs> oh, he's the second hour guy. Like, you know, like, well, he's in the main event this week. But when you see yes. Pete Dunne, you do, you already know it's 9 o'clock. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so you had yeah. three other matches, too. So you had Matt Riddle versus Bronson Reed. Matt Riddle kind of showed. Cool. It was cool. Matt Riddle kind of showed, like, different style of offense a little bit. Bronson Reed, I think, looked good, and I th I like that commentary hyped up Bronson Reed too. Yeah, that was cool. Um, they they're just like big boy season, really bigging him up. I'm I'm waiting for it. Malcolm Bivens, I'm waiting for him. I'm waiting for Bronson Reed to lose, and then we hear Malcolm Bivens' music. Uh, Bevins, sorry, music. <laughs> and then we get that going because we don't know if he's a talker yet or anything, but so far he's really good in ring. Yeah, Killian Dane versus Boa. Boa, again, he had some offense here until Killian Dane kind of like 
86 to all that, and Killian gets the. I didn't. I didn't like this match. It was all right. I didn't. I, you know what I mean. I didn't think it helped either guy. It was just kind of like a match. That it, it, it sure as hell did nothing for Boa, and I think um, the promo that Boa had as well. Um, not that cool either. It was kind of just him, you know, just shouting stuff and moving his arms. And he is speaking in his native language, so I'm not going to shit on him for that. But it's just like, he, he I don't understand uh, Chinese, so it just looks like he's just swinging his arms. Then I wanted to kind of get into the Finn, pro, or Finn Balor promo a little bit. Mm-hmm. He does a promo, and he, he's obviously like he's kind of like putting past in the past. He's kind of looking towards to the future, and he'll be there next. He'll be in full sale next week. Um, obviously, when you have Finn, he's got to be at the top. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if he's gonna just assert himself and kind of go after Adam Cole next week or call him out. Um, what are your feelings on the second coming of Finn Balor? Because, like I said, like he was the he was the guy, like, you know what I mean? Like, he was the guy, like, yeah, initial... He, NXT. he is NXT. Yeah, <laughs> and he's coming back, and um, things have been different, but, like, he's still Finn Balor, so, like, how do you feel about it? Um, where, where they're gonna place him, I don't know. Where I would like for him to be placed, uh, against Haas. I wanna see, I wanna see him versus Keith Lee, Dijakovic, uh, Bronson Reed, Killian Dane, Damien Priest, just, I don't, uh, I'm not too interested in seeing him versus, like, Gorgano, Chomp, or Adam Cole right now. I, That's I, I think that, like, the program that you kind of do is him versus Damien Priest. Kind of, like, have, like, because Damien mm-hmm. Priest has, like, that little um, vampire thing to him, and you could kind of play that into the demon if you wanted to. And, of course, Damien mm-hmm. Priest is undefeated, so, like, it'd be a good starting off point if you want to do, like, a first feud for him. But then, like, he could mm-hmm. also kind of go after the main title. But then that creates a chasm because you have so many challengers for it. Like, you have, uh, like, Ciampa's going to go for it. I don't know, like like I said, like, with Finn, if you're bringing a big guy back there, you obviously want him to kind of, like, go for it, too. So, it, it's... Maybe to go with a triple threat. I don't know. Like like we said, there's a huge... We got a huge gap of time before we get to war games. So, like, what are you going to do? Like, are you going to keep building, keep building, keep building, and then give, you know, Finn, like, some matches under his belt, and then then go for it? Or, like, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah. What yeah. I, I, so far right now, I don't understand Bowers' inclusion in NXT right now. I guess it's a big guess it's a name, big game, but they haven't done anything to him yet. Yeah. It's cool. It's cool. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, it's just, it's just, just like, where is he going to be placed? I don't want him to, like, him to like, you know, more or less hurt any of the talent or anything like, like that. that. Um, you know, you know, be an NXT champion. I don't want, I don't want him to be NXT champion. Um, um. At least not yet. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Really, uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll never any for any champion. Yeah, not, not, not yet. Not yet. I know they're they're really establishing this as the third brand, but like, don't give it to him yet. Like, I feel like Matt Riddle needs a run with it. If you're not going to move him off of it immediately, there's other guys that you could kind of like give the title to first <laughs> before you move on. Um. The main event, Damian Priest versus Pete Dunne. I saw a lot of people come around on uh, Damian Priest. Uh, like, you know what? I'm sold on this guy. I think with ROH, when him being Punishment Martinez, I was like, yo, this is a really athletic big man. Like, if you put him in a situation where he could succeed and kind of, like, not have that Punishment Martinez thing to him, um, he could really go far, and I really like. Uh, some of it can be attested to Pete Dunn, because Pete Dunn's an amazing worker. But Damian Priest is really mm-hmm. showing me something, and he gets the win here. I like where they're 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 kind of building him. I, I like that, like they're really showing like 
not only does he have power, but he has athleticism as kind of like a six-five big man. This week, I was very impressed with what I saw. Redeemed him. Yeah, I, I, so, like we said, like this show kind of just hit beats, went boom, 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 boom. Uh, it ran yeah, through like really, really beats. fast. It feel. Um, it seems like NXT is trying to settle in storylines here. Like they're trying to. They're trying to get a lot of people on it and within two hours, but they're trying to kind of like build some future stories that people can latch onto. And I think that was a strength in NXT this week. Like, how do you feel about it? Do you feel a little more settled where they're going with it? No. Um, there's a, there's still a lot of stuff up in the air. Uh, even though we kind of have like, we know where the, um, the North American title is going, but it's still up in the air whether, like, is Ciampa, like, is Ciampa going to just be racking up wins against, you know, whoever the hell so he can get a, a title shot? Or is he already granted one because he never truly lost it? So, like, where is that going? We, we're going to find out what they're going to be doing with Finn Balor, and then hopefully there's an angle that happens after his match versus whoever it might be. Um... But no, I'm not really satisfied on where it's going. Well, like, the the picture isn't clear for me. It's not, yeah, it's... I feel like it's going to take weeks for us to kind of, like... I feel like when we get to War Games, then we'll kind of, like, settle into, like, a regular, yeah. like, cadenced show. Because right now, it's yeah. just like they're trying to... Um, throw a lot draw of talent out. out. Yeah, and draw stuff out a little bit. But like they kind of like gotta settle on the story details. Um, yeah, like right now is just like what they they put on a lot of matches to make up for the lack of story beats that we have kind of have going on, and I don't think that's a good approach because there's a lot of good matches on the show that would have done extremely better if they had more time. Yeah, the. So that was kind of like our, our thing about both of the shows. So viewership, AOW is down a little bit. It's uh, hovering on 1.1 million. Uh, it's That's dangerously close numbers. to like dropping out of that million range. And uh, NXT is hovering at like about uh, 700 and... Yeah, about seven hundred. Uh, oh, I thought it was uh, like nine hundred k. No, nine hundred k was like uh, October second. So it's like, oh, okay. yeah. So it's around like that's like what it was like last week. It, it dropped about like point two percent. Like, yeah, about a little bit over seven hundred. So like it's yeah, it it dropped. But it's not but too not. drastic. But like what's yeah, telling I, I get like some some people are just like I'm just gonna catch it on the network. <laughs> yeah, I feel like when we look at these ratings, um, a lot of people like I, I, I think a lot of people are down on like NXT's audience. But you got to consider that like a lot of people will probably watch AOW live first. And yeah. since everybody has the network already, they're gonna watch it, watch NXT on the network. But it's telling to me that mm. from that that drop, so AOW had 1.4 million October second, right? And then already two mm -hmm. weeks later, we're at 1.01. We're about to drop out of that million. Yeah, and you know, for AEW, I don't, our, uh, I don't think the ratings are like taking account to the people that are watching on Fight TV, which I think is the supreme way to watch AEW. Yeah, I saw that you mentioned that, like, it, Fight TV. It, 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 is, it is the way. So, Because you know what happens? You don't get the TNT commercial break, so you don't have to, like, try to watch the match with the pitcher and pitcher. It's kind of, like, always going through, so it's kind of like a pay-per-view. So I think it's, you know the best way to consume the product currently. That's pretty dope. I'm, I'm actually going to try that this week. I'm going to try to watch it through Fight TV. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's week three. We are week three within uh, what they call the war. 
So, uh... <laughs> the quote-unquote the war. The war. Uh, <laughs> so, a lot of stuff happened. We, we are getting into... Well, closer, we're getting into full gear with ALW. NXT... I'm scared. <laughs> I actually... Because that means I have to watch another show then. Oh, yeah, we're going to have to double up. So, like, the A-show guys have, oh. have to do... Sometimes they have to do SmackDown on Friday, and if there's a pay-per-view, um, they're going to have to watch that on Sunday, that. and then they're going to have to watch Raw on Monday... That's kind of, we're going to have to do a Wednesday and then sometimes do a Sunday or a Saturday, depending on uh, an NXT. Let's see. Yeah. So you got, yeah, Wednesday and then like sometimes like a takeover's on Saturday. So we have, so be prepared for that. Uh, yeah. That's the show for the week. Of course, give us a follow at RNC Radio Live. We got a ton of stuff on there, like playlist, a show, uh, so help me God just finished. Uh, we had the lead up to Breaking please, Bad. We got... Please go listen to So Help Me God. If you are a fan of the Righteous Gemstones, please listen. Yes, please listen to that. That <laughs> Very funny. We got, like, late fees. You're going to come back with um, spot callers, right? Yes. Uh, update on that. We're going to be dropping a bonus episode for the month that we missed. And we're gonna be, we're still gonna watch the uh, the IWA Mid South uh, something to prove 2005. Off the top of my head, didn't look at any notes. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna be looking at that. So you're gonna, we're probably gonna be dropping something on Halloween, or we're probably gonna like have two drops that day. So look out for that. There's stuff in the books. Yeah, stuff in the books. Yeah. Uh, spot calls was fun. <laughs> what we did. Uh, of course, we got like the final yeah. cut with me with uh, American Horror Story '84. It's been crazy this season. Yeah, there's something for everybody on RNC Radio Live, and I'm pretty mm. sure we got more ideas coming. We 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 have a. I think, I think uh, it was said on a different podcast that we have like 19 shows on the <laughs> uh, between two of them. So there is something there. That will pique your fans. Oh yeah, like the challenge, a meal show with the challenge. Like, if you want to get caught up with uh, that, you got that. The Pokemon show that he has. Mm-hmm. Uh, literally. Uh, the Dragon Ball Z stuff that might be coming later. The sports stuff with RSPN with uh, NBA NBA coming back very soon. Next week. So, you know, yeah, there is a lot of stuff on the network. <laughs> it's dope, man. Like, I'm I'm glad like to do the show with you and kind of like be like in that collective of just like dope creatives and dope friends man so mm-hmm. yeah oh you know what's crazy what's going? we're having a new show uh the first responders ah yes um with cam from late fees and uh some of his pals uh, i think it should be dropping monday so we have like probably more than 20 shows on the network right now <laughs> it's a whole yeah like why do a streaming service like netflix when you do kind of like rnc radio you know what i mean um we're better than <laughs> so yeah that's does it for me johnny and cyrus no not johnny bro no i said Bur, no here? i said Bur johnny oh, <laughs> oh my fault yeah, you're good. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, so we're johnny <laughs> and cyrus we will be back next week uh whether whether if you want to drink the uh shot of the bubbly or not uh yeah so we'll talk to oh, you <laughs> we'll talk to you next week <laughs>